I'm the Intrepid Guide and today I'm in Rotterdam I'm going to be showing you all the things that you can do in this awesome city. If you're new to this channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications and you get more videos like these. Welcome to Market Hall. Behind me is the world's largest painting. It covers 11,000 square meters and it is known as the Sistine Chapel of Rotterdam. But it's not just a marketplace, it's also a place of residence. There are 228 apartments that all have windows that look down into the Market Hall where there are 98 food stands. In the market hall, I've got my first freshly made Struat bathroom. Mm, awesome. Well, this is where it all began. Right outside the market hall in Rotterdam is where people first started to settle by the river Rotta. But unfortunately, that river, it flooded the whole area and they all had to flee. And it wasn't until 1270 that they all came back. And what did they do? Well, they built a dam and by the 14th century, they called the city Rotterdam. Today, you can see where the river Rotter used to flow through. It's actually marked now by gray bricks on the pavement. If I was to sum up Rotterdam in one word, it would be architecture. And my favourite example of this in the city of Rotterdam are these cube houses. Now these were designed by Piet Blom, who was a Dutch architect. Now these were his answer to building housing over a pedestrian bridge in the 1970s. The cube houses were actually designed to look like an abstract forest and they're tilted in such a way that they give perfect visibility over the surrounding area. But there is just one design flaw and that is that only one third of the interior space is actually livable space. Other than that, if you'd like to see inside, you can actually go in one. It's open from 9 till 5pm, so let's go and have a look. <laughs> the cube house. I'm currently on the third floor. So it's sort of like a little bit of a hangout area. Uh, one floor below is the bedroom, the study and the bathroom and then below that is the kitchen and lounge area. <laughs> over this area we've got quotes by uh, Pete Blom the architect and this one translates to a house is like love love is the roof of the city this beautiful building behind me is called a bit house and it was built in 1898 and it's one of the rare examples of one of the buildings that have survived the blitz of World War II it used to be Europe's tallest building it's got 10 floors and from the rooftop terrace you get awesome views over the city talk about a museum with a difference the maritime museum here in Rotterdam gives you access not only to its very interactive museum but also to the boats that are moored here that are over 100 years old these used to be used in the Rotterdam port and instead of taking them to the shipping yard they brought them here and you can visit them as part of your entry ticket on the world's first crowdfunded bridge. It's bright yellow and if you donated 25 euros, you could have had your name engraved on one of the wooden panels. All in all, 8,000 people put their names down to be part of this crowdfunding project and in the end, the city council donated the rest of the money to help build the bridge. Yeah, 
side here of the Stadthuis or the Town Hall which was built in 1914 and completed in 1920 and it's one of those buildings that almost escaped any damage during the Second World War. It's built in the Dutch Renaissance style and you can visit the courtyard where I am now and also the interior hall and if you want to see more of the rooms in the Town Hall you can take a private tour. <music> in Rotterdam you'll arrive at the central station here. Behind me you can see its unique roof which points to the city centre. This station is special for many reasons and one of them is for its 3,000 solar panels that sit on the roof. They power all the lights, lifts and elevators in the station and when that creates too much power they just sell it to the national grid. So what about all those cyclists here in Rotterdam? Well they've got 5,000 bike parking spaces just below the station where I'm standing now. So what about the lettering on the outside of the station? Well that's the original lettering taken from the previous station that stood here in 1957. When they took the letters down from the previous station and they had them in storage while the new station was being built, six of the letters mysteriously disappeared. What a strange thing to steal. But anyway, they decided they were going to keep the same typeface, the same uh, style and colouring. They recreated them and that's what you see today on the front of the station. So one other interesting thing about the station is that it's the only station in the Netherlands not to say the name of the city on the station itself from the outside. So it just says Central Station, it doesn't say Rotterdam Central Station. And the reason for this is because the locals said, well, if you're in Rotterdam, you know you're in Rotterdam. <laughs> Santa Claus by Paul McCarthy, an American sculptor who was commissioned by the city of Rotterdam to create a piece of artwork for the city. Now it cost the city 200,000 euros but when they finally saw the statue for the sculpture they decided that they didn't like it and it took them another seven years to decide where to put it. Um, now the reason why they didn't like it was not because of religious reasons but because it looked like Santa is holding a butt plug. <laughs> And as the local legend goes, if you want a good sex life, you have to rub its foot. What do you think? Should I do it? <laughs> All over Rotterdam there's awesome street art like this one behind me and what makes this one special is that it's interactive. You can climb the ladder and be the second person in the ladder. the cutest spot in Rotterdam it is Delfthaven and it has survived the World War II bombings and it makes it one of the most popular areas to visit here in Rotterdam. Hello Euromask! This is, of course, the Euromast Tower built in 1960 and it was purpose-built to give awesome views over the city of Rotterdam. They've got two restaurants up there. It sits at 180 metres high up. Uh, you can zip line and abseil down the tower if you like. Otherwise, if you're feeling like you want to stay over the night, well, you can do that too. There are two suites that you can rent out. View from the top, not bad. could be more Dutch than windmills and there are 19 of these 18th century restored uh, windmills just outside of Rotterdam 23 kilometers on the water bus it's a beautiful ride and once you get out here you can walk around you can ride your bike there's even a canal ride if you wish uh, and you can even visit some of the windmills if you're interested in that too called Kinder Dijk, which translates to Children's Dyke, and it's famous for having the largest cluster of windmills in all of the Netherlands.
to the Boyman's Van Binnerhen Museum was to see the Tower of Babel painting. It's actually not on exhibition at the moment. Uh, it's just come back from Japan where it was on loan there and they're creating a new exhibition here. But I do recommend that you come to the Boyman's Museum. It's one of the most important in Europe uh, and certainly in Rotterdam and the Netherlands. Uh, it covers, it's just so many different artists here. You can see Matisse, Dali, um, um, Kandinsky, uh, so many artists here. Rembrandt, of course, Van Gogh, uh, Matisse, uh, the list goes on. You really have to make a trip here. It all goes through um, from the Renaissance time, the Middle Ages, uh, and through to uh, modern art as well. <laughs> Believe it or not, but this building right behind me is a church. Now, how did it end up looking like this? Well, when they were coming to redesign the new central station here in Rotterdam, the architect actually had big plans for it, but the city of Rotterdam, the people decided, no, it's too expensive and it doesn't represent the people that live here. So they ended up letting the architect rebuild these three buildings behind me and also the church. Welcome to the floating forest. So why is there a floating forest here in Rotterdam? Well, the artist George Baker wants us to think about the relationship between the city dweller and nature. And that's because every time a new building is built, sometimes they need to cut down trees to do so. Instead of just taking those trees away, they've recycled them, they've given them a new purpose, a new life. They've placed them in recycled sea buoys that use fresh water inside to sustain the trees and place them here in the harbour. There are 20 trees afloat in the harbour and there is one on the mainland. Well, well, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video about Rotterdam. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. In the meantime, leave a nice big thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to my channel, turn on those notifications to get more videos like these, and I'll see you in the next video. Good soon.